Welcome back to the SSL Family Dad channel. Today we are going to finally build our hoops over the raised bed garden so we can heat this and hopefully get some things to grow in here. So we planted this together in the last video. We've got carrots and radishes and lettuce, I think. We've got dwarf kale and the numbers on the bottom of the little stakes there, just how many are planted per square. And so that just tells us in each square uh, where I planted using the template there. We've got some pak choy. We've got a whole bunch of bush beans. And then down at the far end on the other side here, I've got uh, a bunch of potatoes. So this whole area right here is potatoes. They're purple potatoes that we had from uh, last year that were left over that were starting to sprout so we threw those in uh, these labeled bell are all bell peppers so i tried to plant the uh, shorter crops on the south side of the bed here so they won't shade out the other stuff um, they're backwards but all these down the middle are all tomatoes and then and also on the far side there's this kind of whole center section is all tomatoes so they'll grow up in the tallest part of the hoops and then i've got four eggplants back there the end down here next to the heater hopefully will heat this side of the bed up the most so we'll get the hotter temperatures down there and then the uh heat will come down here obviously but this will probably be the cooler end of the uh of the raised bed so uh, this will cool down first is the general idea and then i've got all my cold weather stuff uh, down at this end so first thing i'm going to wet this bed down really good i want to get it just soaked water really well and then uh, we'll get our hoops put on here next so So the idea will be to make some kind of a hoop similar to this. So it'll be a real high arch uh, hoop. These are 10 foot pieces of uh, electrical conduit is what I'm using. It's PVC, PVC conduit. I just have to figure out uh, a good way to fasten them to the uh, logs on each side. Now there's lots of different options. I could drill holes in here and just slide the conduit right in the holes. Um, I could screw in lag bolts and slip the conduit right over the lag bolts. But what I grabbed at the store the other day is these uh, uh, two hole clamps which I think is going to work. I think I'm going to try to keep the, the PVC pipe on the inside of the uh, um, logs like that so I can just slip it right on the inside and then put a two hole clamp you know one right there and then one on the other side and then at the ends I'll clamp it right to the pole and same with the middle beam in the middle of the bed also. So what I might do is uh, cut a bunch of maybe eight inch pieces and we'll stick them in in this uh one end of the conduit so it'll just extend these out just a little bit longer and we have a 12 foot piece of plastic so and these are with the 10 foot conduit that should uh, allow even if i add a little piece onto it that should allow the plastic to kind of drape over these logs just a little bit got all of our hoops in and they don't look too bad uh, these end ones were some old conduit and they they seem to be they don't shape evenly for some reason but uh, one of the things that you can do with pvc is i could i could grab a, a hair dryer or a heat gun and if you just heat this pvc up it'll kind of flex into place but i'm not too worried about it i'm a little short on conduit because uh, some of the old ones i was going to use those those ones are laying on the ground over there they were deformed a little bit they weren't making nice arches and so i decided to scrap those ones and just use the new stuff i had so i'm a little short 
on conduit. So what I might do, I may not run, I was gonna run one right down the center uh, on the top, at one or two actually, I may not do that. These are actually, they're pretty pretty stable side to side, and so I'm not too, too worried about that actually. Uh, what I'd rather do is make some kind of a reel out of the pieces that I have for each side so I can roll the plastic up and roll it back down on each side so I can access inside the bed to water and weed and, and all that kind of good stuff. I also bought a piece of one inch conduit and I thought that I could maybe make some clamps or clips that would snap on to the conduit here and hold the plastic in place for the ends and maybe you know along the bottom or center or on my reel and things like that. So I'm gonna experiment with cutting a few of these up and cutting some notches in them and things like that and see how well those work. I don't know if I'll need the one inch, I don't know if it'll hold tight enough or if I'll end up going with some scrap pieces of the three quarter inch and cutting a larger notch in it to make the clip real tight on there. So we'll experiment with those and see what works best. All right, so I cut the cut that open quite a bit more, and actually I think I can cut it open even more than this. It's really, it's still really tight on here. Once it once it clips on, that thing is tight. And if I have plastic in between there, it's going to be even tighter. So, so what I think we'll do is just cut this open even further, um, all the way down the the tube, and then we'll cut it into a bunch of clamps, probably closer to this size right here. I think it'll be easier to work with. Well, it's definitely coming together. It's not not uh, not perfect, but uh, what I ended up doing these clamps that I made, they uh, just did not work. They unfortunately I cut them too big, um, and uh, they wouldn't really clip on. And when I cut cut them smaller, so they pinched tighter, they actually tore the plastic. So, but they actually worked out perfectly with the uh, with the screws. So, I had some extra thin threaded screws, some short ones, and so it just stretched the plastic tight, and then zip a screw in the middle and it holds everything real nice and tight. And some things are just kind of goofy because uh, I don't really have a good way to attach it around the ends. And so that uh, is probably gonna tear at some point, I'm sure. And same thing with these middle spots. And also because the post is in the middle, I had to cut the plastic down here and then overlap it, which kind of made things a little bit wrinkly in that. But So it's not perfect, but it's definitely gonna, gonna serve the purpose. So few things to finish up yet on this but it is getting late so we'll uh, stop back out here tomorrow and finish everything up all right the uh, the hoop worked pretty good last night actually it uh, kept temperatures above freezing for sure and I just kind of tied everything together as best as I could but uh, but man did it stay warm here real nice and warm in here so uh, we'll finish this up and get uh, get our rolling sides completed and uh, get the ends sealed up so the first thing I want to do today is I want to use this uh, three quarter inch conduit here. I'm going to attach it to the bottom of this plastic and make a, a roll, a reel, so this can reel up on the sides so I can open it up when it's warm and so that I can uh, reel it up and get in there and, and work on the beds and water and harvest things. Um, as I said last night, I put these clamps on. So I've put one at the position of the top of where it'll roll up to. One here and I put one down at the end there and then I've got one down here at this end 
as well. So the uh, plastic will roll up to this point and we'll make it uh, make it stop. And I've made some of these little reels. This is just a pretty basic uh, basic deal here out of some conduit and uh, heated it up and bent it into a kind of a reel. So this one did not turn out as good. You can see it's kind of twisted. So we'll work on the second one. Hopefully it'll turn out a little better, but it does function and, and does the job of reeling the plastic up. So All right, well, we're pretty much ready to wrap it up here. And I'll go through a tour of uh, some of the changes we made. But you look down here, one of the things I can see already, look how dry that is down here. And the end towards the heater really dried out, dried out this end quite a bit more all the way down to about there. And then you can see it gets wet here because of the, all the condensation from the, uh, from the plastic. This end's colder, so all that, all that humid air sound accumulating down here it seems like and it's all dripping down on this end so we'll have to make sure we keep it real wet so i'm gonna go ahead and wet this thing down real good and then we'll uh roll it down fire up the heater and see how warm it gets in there i do have a soil probe in here and this one's about an inch below the surface kind of out there in this in the center of the the side and it looks like it's at about 74 degrees so uh soil temperature just below the surface is uh, it's pretty warm and it's about 30 to 35 degrees inside the greenhouse so i think that's pretty good Well, I think the old heater is working really, really well. I have the fan set on the lowest setting in there, and within about 10 minutes, it was up to 65 in here. So um, it, uh, it's going to keep this this uh, plenty warm enough. I could turn the fan speed up a little bit, but I don't think I need to. I'll just leave it on the low so I don't burn through so much wood. And I just want it to slowly you know, heat up and cool down. I don't want any sharp temperature changes. But uh, got it all nice and wet in here. Our uh, plastic's rolling down and up really easily so I can get in and out of this thing with no trouble. So I showed you guys these. I was using those, those two hole clamps up here to uh, screw in this and it was pulling this plastic all down and everything. So what I decided to do instead was just take that two hole clamps off and just screw right through the conduit into the post. And that way I could tighten the plastic 
on the top it looks a lot nicer and it secured it uh, quite a bit better and all these clamps work really really well so basically just cut it right in half that's uh, that seemed to be what worked the best and then I'm using these uh, thin or fine threaded drywall screws they're not the coarse threaded wood ones I think they're for metal studs but they work really good in this uh, this plastic and so basically just cut them right in half I used a grinder cut mine of course but uh, you could use a table saw or something else to cut them in half it seems to work pretty good I just cut them in random sizes the little uh, twine holders at the end that'll just hold it up while I'm working in there and if it gets too warm in the morning I'll come out and roll these up and just let it uh, let it air out and if it's cold at nighttime we'll come out when I do chores and roll the sides down so shouldn't be a problem got a couple temperature sensors in here I've got one of them out here I've talked about these in the past as always I link uh, these in the description um, these uh, little wireless uh, temperature sensors comes with a pack of two so there's one in there and then I have another one hanging inside here so I can tell what, what temperature the, uh, the inside of the raised bed is. Um, and then I have my thermal cube. So that's that uh, therm thermometer or thermostat outlet. And that turns on at 35 degrees. So once it gets down to 35, that kicks on. And then that orange extension cord is run all the way down um, along the outside, all the way down on the other end to the fan. And so once it gets down to 35, that fan will kick on and it will gently push some nice warm air all the way down to this end and then once it reaches i think 44 degrees or 45 degrees or something like that it shuts off and then the fan will shut off at the other end and the heat will turn off so and then the only gap i have is down here at the bottom um, of this end so i'm hoping that the heat will kind of uh, fill this whole tunnel that way and then be forced out the the bottom of the uh, of the end here so it'll kind of heat the whole thing uh, if I let it vent at the top of course all the hot air is just going to sit at the top of the tunnel and exit right out the top there so I want to try to force it down to the bottom as much as I can I also could add a baffle in the middle to force the hot air to roll down underneath it and that might might help a little bit also but with this end of the bed being all my cool other stuff my lettuce and carrots and all that kind of thing I don't think it'll be too big of an issue as long as it doesn't freeze down here that's really all I care about and with the soil being heated and the air, I don't think that's going to be an issue. So let's reel this down. And it seals pretty good along the bottom. You got to wiggle it around a little bit, but it kind of connects with the with the log just about all the way down there's some little gaps there but that's that's all right it'll still hold the, the heat in there I think just fine so so there it is the low tunnel inside the high tunnel <laughs> it's actually pretty tall I could have I could have gone quite a bit lower with it but I wanted to make sure I had plenty of room in there to grow you know tomato plants and pepper plants and taller stuff uh, throughout the year so this is going to be a permanent design in here this will stay in here year round and uh, hopefully you'll be able to, to grow in here throughout the winter time. We'll see. Well, what do you guys think? The, the heated raised bed covered now by the, uh, the heated uh, low tunnel, we'll call it. And uh, I think it's gonna work really good. I, this thing holds a lot of heat just from the sun. Uh, earlier today, it, it only got up to about 22, 23 degrees today. Uh, when the sun came out, it was 86 in here in that tunnel. Uh, in the greenhouse, it was about 65. So it's a good 20 degrees warmer in the in the tunnel without any any heat or anything like that. Uh, with that heater in there, I think we'll have no problem keeping this from freezing and frosting. And I may do something similar with another table, heated table, to start seedlings on. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video anyway. I will, of course, keep you guys updated on growing and all that kind of stuff. Um, big maple syrup run coming up next week and so expect a lot of maple syrup collection and, and other things like that uh, um, on the channel uh, lots of good stuff i'm excited about that we're gonna be boiling 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 here uh, next week so uh, stick around for that thumbs up on the video guys please hit thumbs up makes a huge difference and this is your first time coming to the ssl family dad channel well subscribe already we'd love to have you follow along and as always guys thanks for watching have a good one